Well, I'm sitting in the Petro in North Las Vegas. And there's a bunch of equipment, you know. I, I never saw so much equipment, you know, being moved. See, this is a grater. These are tricky to, to load because of that blade that sits at an angle. And I see the guy put a piece of timber in there. It's going to fall out because it's going to split that timber. It's crazy. It's not a very good load. And on the other side of that driver and in the middle of the frame. Oh, you'll see now. Actually, very cool looking. I like that one, you know. It's that new, uh, the new Peterbilt. The new Peterbilt, kind of like a modern uh, style, right? Uh, I forgot the model number, but see, it's a four axle truck. No air cleaners, no cares. And it's a set forward axle. Like before, first they, they released them um, set back axle, and then I guess people wanted set forward. Uh, and the guy has a. Uh, Midwest uh, drilled foundations machine, like a big excavator. Uh, anyway, I'll tell you the surprise, little surprise that happened. I, I, I went in like I haven't eaten anything whole day today and time now is seven o'clock my time. So I think it's four over here. The restaurant is closed, take out only. They say order online and you can do a takeout. But the deli should be open. There's a super nice deli inside. So basically it's a takeout, right? And so I uh, I do this. I try to use the uh, app. You know, it asks me for, for um, license plates because it's Las Vegas. They require license plates. So you still have to get out of the truck, run around. And then when it says, yeah, okay. So I just tried to scale the truck. So the truck looked good. Check this out. 14.7 on the steer, 34,000 on the drives. So the pusher was up and 34.5 on the, on the Jeep. Looks perfect, right? Only 83,000 that's on the truck. And because I was hoping that this thing is, uh, you know, not too heavy. But then I look at this. I tried to do a split weight. She could not do it. She says scale is overloaded. Jesus. So I had to do three times. Have to go around. And it's super tight. You have to bring your front on the gravel over there. You're almost falling into that uh, artificial, uh, some kind of reservoir. I'm telling you, it's crazy. It's super, because I'm 105 feet long. And I have, I have uh, eight feet, eight foot overhang of this boom. But basically, so yeah, the truck and the Jeep are fine, but then I finally managed to scale and I see way too much weight on the first tandem. You know, pretty much no weight on the rear tandem, on the two plus two booster, all the weight on the front. So I'm like, what? I tried everything. And that's what we were doing yesterday when we were loading. We tried, you know, different scenarios, but finally this morning so I called the JC trailer and I said here's the problem you know like I have rear axle 3 it pretty much goes in the air for some reason that booster just cannot you know push hard enough you know and the guy says well you need to shim you need to put you need to put they, they used to they told me no shims right oh you don't have to use shims unless you want to like I why would I want to you know but now he says yeah it's because of the uh I told him there's a big gap. Uh, hold on, we can probably go and uh, I can show you this. Uh, why, why it would not work? So there was a huge gap between the axle two and uh, and the spreader, and because of that, there was too much slack. And he says, uh, put a shim in there. I said, I can't because you, you gave me round holes. They're not for shims. And so the guy said, I said, how about if I shim the axle behind the spreader? And he says, that's not going to do anything. You need to shim in front of the spreader. And I said, so it looks like I have to switch back to three plus one. And he says, it works for you fine. I said, yeah, for three plus one work. And he says, put a shim between uh, axle two and three. And so 
I walk I walked around, I went to these guys said and they have a forklift but they don't they not they're not allowed to uh, to um, to do this kind of stuff but yeah you need a forklift to you know to re, re disassemble and reassemble it's a huge job you know and but I see uh, the good thing is that I'm inside uh, like industrial area it's like an uh, industrial park and so I went across the street first guy I saw I said 200 bucks he says okay deal bring the truck so I brought the truck and it took us probably four hours four hours to do this so this is you remember what it was before when I had the scraper truck right this but you see this so now I added the biggest shim in here and I still have a negative angle you see it's still slightly but it's much better than before before I had the smallest one yellow but the problem is this the problem is this the huge you see I can put two fingers in here almost and one in here and these holes are round so you cannot shim them because you know it will not go anywhere and those holes are round so they have to do something and so he says yeah when you come back we'll fix it but he says personally I think you should run three plus one all the time he says I think it's better and I tend to agree with him you know because with this it goes much easier around corners two plus two actually is more hesitant because there's so much pressure you know and also backing backing is easier with this because you know when you back you just drain the air uh, from one axle and you lock these right but you see what's happening here look at the angle see that's what that guy from JC was was able to he understood that right away because I see he says it's not supposed to be like that right but at least now I can push this into the ground was before this chains were super tight so the airbags were all like kind of like two feet long you see so they're still not they're still this is still bigger than this but it's definitely a huge difference than what I had before I'm telling you like before these airbags well it, uh, they were like 30% smaller there was so much weight here and the stinger, stinger could not do anything you know so basically what I need is I can still raise it higher but I'm just afraid that it'll blow or something you know but what am I here one two three four five six seven eight I might try to raise it to at least now there's nothing in the front you know whereas before imagine right I had the second axle here you know when I try to do this it's like turning it it's turning it like this right and so this axle axle three was in the air the wheels were spinning you know but yeah so I can move some weight here and yeah and when I come back we're gonna do the same style uh, connectors over here because of course I was like a miner again climbing there reattaching everything I'm telling you it was a nightmare doing this in a foreign town so so yeah but at least all chains are loose everything is good and so the next thing we got to do is uh, we got to move the machine believe it or not so I got to take all these chains off but I'm not doing this today uh, yeah, see, that's a uh, Fontaine Stinger, by the way. Oh, I wanted to buy this one. That, uh, you see that EQ1, that's fully hydraulic. So this is uh, MX. Oh, it's extendable. It's extendable, probably 40 ton or something. But anyway, so I gotta, I gotta take all these chains. But the good thing is now I already have the locations, you know, that's like half of the battle where you have your locations, right? So all I got to do is basically I got to keep the chains hooked at one position, just unhook the binders and I hook them here, but keep them hooked there. So it's faster and of course unhook here. And I called Alan, the guy who was loading me yesterday, and he says, oh, we already gone. What? So it turns out this thing is made in Finland. It's a Finnish machine. But the problem is, not in, you see, not enough weight on the truck, too much weight over here. So what does that tell you? And so this center of gravity, I said, why is it here? Oh, it's because when it has a hammer. So they took the hammer out. Okay, so mine is here, and I put it like that, one foot forward of my light, and that's still not enough. So basically, the plan is, you see, that's way too, you see this? So, and this, so it's going to hit it. If I look from here, I can see that that part is going to hit it, but 
I can uh, I can bring it pretty much two feet two feet forward so that's a lot with this heavy machine uh, and you see I had to do it like this I, I I don't like it but I grab the hook on this on the on this then we put this like one chain like this one chain here two it has a uh, D-rings in there on the side and uh, there's another other set of D-rings over there so it's all secured so but yeah I feel too tired I don't want to do it today see that's where the the uh, counterweight used to be but definitely too much weight yeah so it has to go all the way all the way when I when I when I feel the heat boom then I stop oh and so this guy Alan I left him a message I said hey uh, do you know anybody and he says well I will just go back to the trade show see if they can help you and I said no I don't want to do that I'm I need to fix I need to fix this and he did not know anybody but but so instead I got I got a very good uh, instruction lesson from him you know I said uh, I said uh, how do I do this how do I move the machine and he says are you in the are you in the cab I said no hold on so I went to the cab inside the cab and he showed me it's pretty simple there's a cutoff switch you have to turn to you know to start the battery and then there's uh, there's a turning you know ignition key and then there's one joystick so one joystick it's not like a two setup you know one joystick controls the whole all the tracks so you go you push it forward it goes forward you push it backwards it goes backwards and uh, you tilt it left it goes left so very easy so he says just be gentle it's just touch it lightly and it should start going right back and there's a camera in there like you have a huge you know screen shows you like the visibility is awesome from that machine you know so I went inside the cab is so big so we'll do another video of, of about this tomorrow when uh, we'll call it rechaining uh, rechaining in Las Vegas but this one is um, so yeah was the, those guys over there on the other side that M building so I saw it I saw I saw a forklift there actually it's moving now but it's very small I saw a forklift sitting there right and I thought I thought hey I'll go and ask those guys but that forklift seemed very small so I just walked oh check this out the helicopter and so it was very small so I walked um, uh, oh check like you see how many trucks are here this is so great no look at this massive uh, Freightliner Coronado well wow, it has the same setup as I as what I used to have yeah I like the look of this I and mean, the guy has a Ukrainian Ukrainian flag on the f fender and uh, Fontaine Fontaine as well with a small or oh, like 23 inch uh, flip box like what I used to have 55 ton no MX oh it's also extendable MX and I see uh, how how I know it's extendable is because in the back it has a split in the back it has a split in the deck so you see that that's kind of like where it goes goes out and what's funny next to me when I parked today next to me was a Russian guy oh check this out wow you guys are in for a treat today holy moly how much it does that weigh I don't think it's that heavy actually why does this guy has all these so that's your that's the truck I wanted to buy that's a t800 wide hood wide hood so it has this ugly old uh, style single axle uh single axle. headlights single headlights so the guys uh try them jeep uh well, it's a 360 komatsu 360 and it's all steerable drop side rail 360 so oh it's probably 60 tons or something that's pretty cool oh and he disconnected look that's his neck 
So this, so I guess I don't think he needs all these axles over here. It's just because he probably was doing something else, and then he got this. Uh, he got this. Uh, this load, you know. But yeah, lots of lots of interesting trucks and interesting uh, loads here. And and yeah, my load is pretty cool too, you know. Like this humongous drill rig or what is what they call the pile driving machine or something. I don't know. Oh, and the um, the Ukrainian Coronado is backing over there. But yeah, I'm too long to back. I saw this guy was sitting here, the Russian guy. Uh, I was parked next to him. He says, "Hey, do you remember me? I helped you to fix the tank. You had a leak on your tank." Actually, only now I remembered. I saw him somewhere in uh, in the west, like Wisconsin or Minnesota. He was trying to help, but he had a step deck. Now he has like a full blown, extendable, sixty ton. I don't know, a fifty five ton or something. And he was hauling a big, uh, like a garbage processing thing. Anyway, so that's it for the day, boys and girls. Things are looking up. In the morning, I was like, what the heck am I supposed to do now, you know? Nothing works. At least now half of the job is done. So the next job is uh, move the machine and, uh, and get going. Hopefully. Thanks for watching.